Well, with manufacturers in Japan forced to suspend production, supply chains are clearly at a standstill. That in turn is disrupting supplies to manufacturers across the globe. And experts say this has exposed crucial weaknesses in a number of businesses ranging from the electronics to auto sectors. Let's find out more in the ABT interview. And our guest tonight is Leon Pereira, Group Managing Director of Spire Research and Consulting, and he joins us from our city studios at OCBC Centre in downtown Singapore. Leon, Japan, as we know, is a key supply to the global auto and tech sector. For now, some manufacturers say they can cope as they still have some inventories, but how long can that last, do you reckon? Good evening, Timothy. Well, I think the inventories that they have in stock may be 30 days or 45 days or longer. These are the typical uh, uh, value of inventories that are kept in stock within these supply chains. But I think the more important factor is really to look at the planning processes that these companies have put in place. The impact of this disaster may not completely disrupt and knock out supply chains for a very extended period of time. If you look at similar earthquakes and similar disasters and their effect on uh, Japanese producers in the past. Let's bear in mind that these are companies that are in an earthquake prone region and they have processes in place to plan for this. So I think probably the greater danger is not so much that there will be a huge prolonged disruption that will stop production of uh, 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 products going to the end consumer but more really the the price effect. For example, NAND semiconductors have seen a price hike uh, in the double digits because of this disruption. Now still, Leon, we saw the disaster hitting transport networks and causing power outages. Do you see that as a bigger problem for companies in the coming weeks? I would actually see that as a bigger problem. I think you're quite right to point that out. Uh, essentially, there is a shortage of electricity that will be going to the manufacturing sector. There will be the prospect of rolling blackouts affecting you know, both consumers as well as uh, manufacturing because basically the uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company is under tremendous strain because of a lot of the capacity coming uh, offline or being troubled because of what's going on with the nuclear reactors. So I think probably just the volume of production is going to be affected because of this sh one must presume short-term electricity issue and again that is going to feed more into the prices of these components rather than you know, the fact that these supply chains are going to be completely knocked out. Now, some experts warn that the just-in-time delivery systems, which are often used in the tech and car sectors, are vulnerable to unexpected supply shocks like what we're seeing right now. What lessons do you think we can draw from this series of events? Well, I don't think that manufacturers are going to react to this by necessarily increasing the amount of inventory of key parts and components or finished goods. Uh, I think the thinking behind just in time is, is, is certainly still valid. I think probably what this argues for is more global diversification or geographic diversification of production or inventory uh, rather than just increasing the value of the inventory as such. And in particular, I think this incident is going to prompt companies to relook at their supply chains and look at areas that are prone to earthquakes close to fault lines, close to the coastlines. And in particular, I think this is a very important point, close to nuclear reactors. I think this could really be a game changer in terms of the business and global attitudes to nuclear power and also a game changer in terms of you know, manufacturers locating facilities close to nuclear reactors. I think probably the diversification and location of the inventory is going to be the thing that manufacturers rethink more rather than just increasing inventory and rethinking just in time uh, as such. Okay, thanks a lot, Leon. Uh, I've been speaking there with Leon Pereira from Spire Research and Consulting. Thank you.